Hey guys, I was gonna make one of my normal, you know, minute-long voiceover videos today, and then I found this, and it kinda ruined those plans. So I put on my best Wendigoon wig, and today we are going to cover the Breaking Bad Theory Iceberg. Starting with Better Call Saul, a spin-off that takes place in the Breaking Bad universe that some people say is better than Breaking Bad, and honestly, I am now inclined to agree with that. So that's where I stand on the first controversial topic of the day. Similarly, El Camino takes place after Breaking Bad, whereas Better Call Saul is mostly a prequel. Let's get to the good stuff. Breaking Bad action figures banned from Toys R Us. So in 2014, Toys R Us was compelled to team up with AMC to release a line of Breaking Bad action figures. And that led to one of the first and most influential Karen freakouts of all time, when a woman named Susan Myers started a change.org petition calling for Toys R Us to remove Breaking Bad dolls from their shelves, saying, quote, while the show may be compelling for adults, its violent content and celebration of the drug trade make this collection unsuitable to be sold alongside Barbie dolls and Disney characters. This petition unironically got 9,195 signatures and Toys R Us had to pull the action figures from their shelves. And just imagine if this happened today. Blue meth is rock candy. So believe it or not, Breaking Bad is a TV show and the meth in the show is not actually meth. If you want to make your own blue rock candy, there are plenty of tutorials, some of which have been blowing up lately, and uh, you can be an at-home Heisenberg without losing any of your teeth. Real life Walter White. So there have been many news stories, both fake and real, about chemistry teachers becoming drug kingpins. So Walter White's alias Heisenberg in the show actually comes from a real life German physicist named Werner Heisenberg, who's known for Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, except not anymore because now he's known as the guy who inspired the name of Walter White's alter ego. So Breaking Bad's first season aired in January of 2008, but in 2007, the Writers Guild of America union of screenwriters in Hollywood, went on strike, which actually forced AMC to shorten the first season from nine episodes to seven. Breaking Bad is a show known for keeping things brief and packing a lot into a little, with the whole run only airing for five seasons. Real Breaking Bad locations. So it looks like the iceberg writer, uh, felt the need to mention that Albuquerque is a real place that exists in America and people live there and you can find places like uh, the Crystal Palace, Jane and Jesse's apartment, the car wash, and of course Walter White's residence, which leads us to the pizza roof. The scene where Walt throws a pizza onto his roof was done in one take which I think is pretty impressive, but there have also been problems where the real life people who live in this house have awoken up with pizzas on their roof. I think that's worse than swatting. It it feels more insulting than swat, maybe, okay, maybe not worse, but Brian Cranston requested to wear the hat. So the reason why Brian Cranston wears this hat is because his head was cold and he asked to. I don't know why this is on the iceberg. Minisodes. There are Breaking Bad shorts on YouTube that you can watch for free. And they're called Minisodes and they're amazing. And you should go watch them if you haven't already. Jesse's Teeth. Now this comes from a soundbite where Vince Gilligan, ever the stickler for realism, says that the one thing he would change in Breaking Bad is make Jesse's teeth more like a meth addict's teeth. They're too white and too straight, and he doesn't think that's realistic. Ah, oh, he's a genius, isn't he? So we're gonna start the deeper waters section with the little tidbit that the pizza on the roof is not sliced. This is because it was easier to huck it up there if it was all as a whole, 
and the visual of a whole pizza sitting on the roof was apparently more striking than a bunch of little slices. Who am I to doubt the genius of Vince Gilligan? Breaking Bad is a Malcolm in the Middle prequel. A lot of the actors in Breaking Bad, including Brian Cranston, were known for their comedic roles before they got their roles in the show. Brian Cranston specifically played Hal, the dad, in Malcolm in the Middle. So there's a fan theory that the events of Breaking Bad are, are a prequel to Malcolm in the Middle, and that after Breaking Bad, Walt goes into witness protection and changes his name to Hal. Which is going to be very difficult for Walt to do because he dies at the end. So I don't really get this theory. Jesse was supposed to die in season one. Jesse surviving through the first season is a consequence of the Writers Guild strike that I mentioned before. Back when the season was nine episodes, Jesse was going to be killed off at an at the end when a drug deal goes wrong. But since it was shortened to seven episodes, that was cut and Jesse lived on. F. Skyler. This is referring to how Breaking Bad fans hate Skyler more than they probably should, especially when Marie is right there. Training videos. If you look at AMC's and Breaking Bad's YouTube channel, you'll see a series of training videos made as promos for Better Call Saul. And these include a series of strikingly realistic Los Pollos Hermanos employee training videos where Giancarlo Esposito is so in character, you'd think that Los Pollos Hermanos was a real fast food restaurant with real employees. Which, by the way, Lyle is just one of the best characters in Better Call Saul. That's indisputable. You could even find some newer ones on there right now, like just opening my YouTube homepage, I found how to avoid jury duty with Saul Goodman. So as we go even deeper, we add even more evidence to the rock solid theory that Breaking Bad is a prequel to Malcolm in the Middle. You may remember one little hold up with that theory is that Walt dies at the end of Breaking Bad. Well here in the deep waters, we believe that Walt isn't dead. There are still several fan theories that say that Walt called the vacuum cleaner man at the end of the show. Maybe he just got up from the floor of the lab and tricked all the authorities into thinking he was dead. The entire series is a dream. So there's a theory that Jesse got so bored in Mr. White's chemistry class that he went to sleep on the desk and dreamed that he dealt meth with a more exciting version of his chemistry teacher. And then presumably he woke up and he, he went to live a, a better life. Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead take place in the same universe. Now, this centers around the fact that they're both AMC shows, but also a detail in The Walking Dead where Daryl's brother Merle has blue sky in his bag. And there's also a scene where they talk about his drug dealer and it's just describing Jesse Pinkman pretty overtly. So make of that what you will. Walt copies the people he kills. So whenever Walt kills someone, he takes on a certain trait from that person. For example, Crazy 8 used to eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches without the crust. After Walt kills him, he starts doing the same thing. Gus drives an old Volvo. After Walt kills Gus, he starts driving an old Volvo. I I'm sure this is a, a Vince Gilligan is a genius moment, but I'm just reminded of that one meme uh, Tony loved cheeseburgers. SaveWalterWhite.com is a website that uh, Walt Jr. makes in the show to raise money for Walt's treatment. And it's actually a real website. We have reached the bottom of the iceberg, not to be confused with the abyss, which is coming up next. Walter Jr. was going to be killed off. So Vince Gilligan once planned for Walter White's son to be killed. And the actor who played Walter Jr. even pitched it to him one time. The exact details 
of how Walter Jr. was going to be killed is explained later in the iceberg. And it makes me really glad that they didn't do it. Gus is gay. So ever since the flashback that introduced Gus's close friend Max, there have been theories that they were more than friends. There isn't much evidence in the show, but if you take a look at his last appearance in Better Call Saul in the bar, you can interpret his relationship with the bartender as flirting. Vince Gilligan once said that they were probably lovers, and Giancarlo Esposito interpreted their relationship as more than platonic, so I'm going to mark this down as canon. Breaking Bad and Death Note similarities. I don't know a lot about Death Note, so I'm going to read from the Iceberg's author. Both series have a character who's overly prideful and commits a series of elaborate and heinous crimes for a noble cause, but becomes corrupted by the power they gain over time. And the main character has an alter ego and commits their crimes under an alias. That's pretty common in shows like these. The sidekick shows them the ropes, and the sidekick suffers from an addiction. The main character becomes partners with someone committing the same crimes as him, and ends up causing them trouble. Now this partner in both shows lead a double life as a friendly public figure motivated to turn to a life of crime after the murder of a loved one. There's a relative who's in law enforcement who dies because of the actions of the main character. And the main character of both shows dies due to a gunshot wound. Coincidence? Probably. 505-842 4205. So within the Breaking Bad universe and Better Call Saul, there is this phone number which is called by characters when they want to reach the vacuum cleaner man, a character who can disappear you and help you start a new life under a new alias somewhere else. This phone number used to actually function. When you called it, you'd be greeted with a voicemail that said, You've reached best quality vacuum repair. Our store hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 6. If you need after hour repairs, please leave your name and number, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can with a call. Thank you and have a nice day. In the show, characters would call this number and say that they need a new dust filter for their Hoover Max Extract Pressure Pro Model 60 and then they'd be taken through the steps of disappearing. We have now made it to the abyss, where two of these theories down here are kind of jokey, and one is absolutely horrifying. Vince Gilligan, has a f Vince Gilligan has a foot fetish, similar to Dan Schneider. Now, there's been some highly publicized controversies concerning a certain character in Better Call Saul and a certain account he was following on Instagram. There is also a meme that simply lists every timestamp of Kim's feet in Better Call Saul. So, Riverside, California. So Breaking Bad was originally supposed to take place in Riverside, which was the meth capital of America at the time the show was made, but it was moved to Albuquerque because New Mexico has a 25% tax rebate for film and television production. See? Local governance matters. The Tuco torture episode. This is a deleted episode that was going to take place at the end of season one before it was shortened due to the Writers Guild strike. And before I get into the plot synopsis, let me just say, this is the most graphic thing I've ever described on my channel. So viewer discretion is very much advised. So according to Vince Gilligan's pitch for the episode, Jesse was going to die horrifically killed by some drug dealer, probably Tuco. And Walter would be pretty understandably beat up about Jesse dying, so he'd kidnap Tuco and tie him up in the crawl space under his house. He would torture him every day, cutting off his toes one by one and cauterizing the wounds with a blowtorch so that Tuco wouldn't bleed out. However, Walter gives Tuco a way out. He ties a shotgun to a device with a trip wire, and all Tuco has to do to end his suffering is trip the wire and fire the shotgun. But he never does it. Eventually, Walt Jr. finds Tuco down there, 
And when Tuco realizes that Walt Jr. is Heisenberg's son, he triggers the tripwire, killing them both. And I am now very glad that the Writers Guild went on strike in 2007. So that's the Breaking Bad Theory Iceberg. If you like this style of video and watch through to the end, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment which theory you find to be most believable. I am Joey Barr, this is what my face looks like if you've never seen it before, and I'll see you guys in the next video.